When I first started reading biographies of some of the great people throughout history, one of the things that struck me was that they always said there were a few key moments in their life, or a few key people they met, or a few key habits they practiced that made all the difference. And very often these things were not big events, but rather they were very small things. And this is one of the most common questions I get from many of you, what am I doing on a daily basis? Well, in this video, I wanna share 12 of the most key habits that I've regularly cultivated to build and hopefully continue to build an epic life. What's up guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master of the Day. Now, for me, the starting point of building an epic life always is some kind of thinking about the getting the clarity and the vision for what you wanna build. And for me, one of the most important things that's helped me do that has been the habit of journaling, which we will talk about later in this video. But I have included a free journaling worksheet and a free journaling email course you'll get. It's the first link in the description. So just click that, you'll get the free journaling e-course, and we'll get back to the video. The first thing that's made a dramatic difference in my life has been reading 30 pages a day. Now with Audible and all these other online ways you can listen, either reading 30 minutes a day or listening 30 minutes a day has been one of the key habits I've done probably for about 10 years now. And it's a way of constantly making sure I'm thinking about personal development, growth, and how I'm going to improve my life. The second thing I've been doing for a very long time, almost religiously, has been spending minimal amounts of time on social media. You guys think it's a coincidence that I've had my business now almost to the month for five years, even having a YouTube audience, and just now I started using Instagram? That wasn't an accident. It's because I really don't like social media. I really don't see it adding much value to my life, and it really consumes a lot of time and doesn't always give much in return, depending on who you follow. So for me, if you think right now you're, going, you're binging hard on social media, track it for 30 days and see how much time you're really spending. For me, I actually have that 30 minute cutoff now because I have Instagram and I'm doing an okay time of sticking to it. But if you realize you're spending three hours a day and you go down to 30 minutes, think about what you could do with that time. The third thing I started doing about five years ago was I started pretending that all of the thoughts in my head would come true. So imagine that you have this thought in your head that you're dating someone, they're gonna leave you. What if that came true? So you decide to change the thought. You have this thought in your head, how am I gonna pay off all this student loan debt? How am I gonna earn more money to take a vacation or help my parents? You pretend that that fear is gonna come true. So then you reel it back in and you instead put in a new thought. One of my first mentors, who's a Chinese medicine doctor, anytime he found himself getting really busy and really stressed with patients at work, he'd come up to me, who I was the front desk person, and he'd say, Alex, something terrible has happened. And I'd look around like really weird and really nervous and he'd go, I'm having thoughts. The fourth thing I started doing really almost immediately when I wanted to improve my life was track all of the things I'm scared of that I wasn't tracking. And most of the time in my mind, this means track your finances and it means track your weight and what you're eating. The fifth thing for me has been always making sure I'm on the right course. And what that means is to watch the drifting going on. It's very easy as we get older to drift with our weight. You know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we decided to go out with friends and get drinks or get a meal that's not aligned with our goals. And then in a year or two or five years, we're 20 pounds heavier. But it didn't happen in one month. It happened in multiple years. Same thing happens in a long-term relationship where we stop paying attention and we stop putting in effort. And then the relationship begins to drift apart. Or even with our finances, the same thing happens where we drift in the sense of we buy more things and we end up spending, let's say, $100 a week at the bar on Friday night, and then we're stuck with four or $500 extra a month in credit card debt. And then by the end of the year, we're looking at $5,000 or more. So tracking drifting is just a matter of bringing back to the day and tracking what am I doing each day, especially tracking the things we're afraid of like we talked about. The sixth thing for me has been a really religious focus now that I control my own schedule, and it's to have a morning tea ritual as you go through your goals, instead of having coffee. So for me, I don't believe that coffee is the enemy, but I do think that having some kind of morning ritual where you drink something warm, it's a ritual to pour it and brew it and consume it. And as you're going through this ritual, you just take a few minutes to review the goals that you're working on in your life, 
the most short term, the long term, and the things that you need to work on in order to advance towards that. So you're starting your day already with a clear focus in mind that I am not going to drift, I'm going to be deliberate. Now, on top of being deliberate, the seventh thing I would always work on was always charting a course consciously. My belief is that almost anyone can achieve incredible things, even if it takes a very long time, if we are constantly, consciously charting a course forward. And for me, that's the biggest value in goals. Nothing is guaranteed. There's no guaranteed reaching any goal. But the guaranteed value is, I say I want to improve this part of my life, I reflect on it, work on it, chisel away at it every day, and some amount of progress will happen over the days, the weeks, the months, and the years. But you have to start off by charting a conscious, specific course and not drifting. The eighth thing for me has been journaling. For me, journaling comes in a lot of different ways. Right now, it's mostly through Evernote. Every damn day, you should be journaling something. Keep a record of your goals. Keep track of all your frustrations. Put down all your ideas. To me, the value of actually journaling is that you're compressing your thoughts, organizing them into clear action principles that you can then use to improve your life. The ninth thing for me has been the greatest thing I've ever done in terms of my mood and my attitude. And it's the reason why, besides a short break in my early 20s where I moved back from China, I've never really struggled with any kind of depression since. And that ritual is the 5 by 45 which is five days a week, spending 45 minutes in the gym, or yoga, or meditating, or qigong, whatever it is, but primarily something that circulates your blood. That by itself will produce such a dramatic change in your mood and your energy that I am shocked more people are not doing it. The 10th thing for me has been the habit of bulk cooking. So if you're not in the habit of cooking already, don't jump in and be like, I'm going to create these magical Martha Stewart meals every day. Start by just making a simple breakfast, or... Try doing what I do, which is on Sunday, you dedicate two hours or so to create a whole bunch of food for the week. And then you can either package that up for three days or so, or you can start freezing those meals and eating them later. Because the reality is, no matter how healthy food is when you go out, the only way to truly control the quality and ingredients and calories is by making it yourself. And obviously, if you don't feel well, it's hard to really act at a high performance standard. The 11th thing for me has been really important in recent years. And it's getting in the habit of, especially in the big decisions in life, following your intuition more than the logical mind, which usually argues in favor of fear. Intuition is something operating at a different level that you can't often rationalize. That's the point of intuition. It's the felt sense. It's the animal sense that's always guiding you towards where you need to be. The problem is your intellect and your intuition can often argue, if you're a smart person or highly educated, We're always taught to use intellect to make decisions, not intuition. But I find in my life, more often than not, it's the intuition that makes the accurate decisions, both in my personal life and in my business life. So it was developing the habit of blindly following my intuition. The last habit for me, the 12th, has been dedicating my life to growth. No matter how lost I was in my early 20s, so I promised myself that if every day sucked as bad as today, no matter what I did, If it never got better, at least I would focus on growing and improving my life. So even if it sucked, then at least I would have a better job where that also sucked. If it was miserable in the sense of my health, my fitness, my finances, at least those domains of life would at least improve. And realistically, if you dedicate your life to growth like that, you're going to see a lot of things change much towards the direction that you want them to change. Now again, for me, the starting point of all change was going through journaling exercises and scripting things and getting clarity on what I'm trying to build, what I'm trying to create. And that doesn't always mean you know specifically, but it may mean a general direction that's exciting to you and interesting. And for me, the journaling exercises I've included on that first link in the description, those are the starting point they were for me, and they still are on many levels for the clarity, the direction, the focus to achieve those goals. So you can check them out right there in the description box below in my last two videos right there and right there.